very good evening to respected seniors and my dear colleagues. First, let me congratulate Zuluskan for adding me to see me today. This evening, we are having two beautiful and interesting topic which is very pertinent across all the discipline of medical science. And we have two excellent speakers who will be speaking on these two topics. And the whole event will be chaired by none other than Dr. P.K. Aldar, who needs no introduction to you. He is a senior physician practicing in Malda. And uh, I am handing over the charge of this session, Dr. P.K. Aldar. Sir, please. Uh, which is very uh, uh, also very important that is uh, uh, drug resistant microorganism uh, as you know the drug resistant microorganism is really divided into uh, uh, three groups actually uh, MDR, XDR and PDR. MDR is uh, multi-drug resistant uh, microorganism actually uh, this term uh, mainly we are well conversant in case of tuberculosis, but it is equally applicable in case of bacteria also. Usually, uh, multi drug resistant uh, bacteria is defined as uh, uh, actually we, we have different sets of antibiotic category. Uh, when uh, one anti uh, antibiotic is resistant to one microorganism is resistant to at least one agent from three or three or more group of category of antibiotic that is multi-drug resistant antibiotic and uh, multi-drug resistant organism rather and in case of XDR that is extended resistant microorganism that is uh, the, uh, the uh, microorganism is resistant to uh, all the groups of antibiotic at least one except one or two uh, that is uh, XDR microorganism and in pan drug resistant microorganism, which is actually uh, I think is a uh, coming day threat to humanity, that is the one microorganism which is resistant to all the antibiotics in all the categories. And uh, Dr. Mondor will speak on MIC and automa automation. Uh, MIC, as you all, all know, the minimum inhibitory capacity that is the this is the concentration of antibiotic which prevents growth of antibiotic for at least 24 hours and automation uh, as you all know in any uh, bacteriological uh, process identification there are five steps that is called five eyes from inoculation to identification inoculation incubation isolation inspection and identification and this may be done manually, this may be done automatic on a, uh, with the help of machine, may be partial, may be complete automation uh, with minimum human intervention. Uh, Dr. Subhrang Shumondol, actually he is a, a good microbiologist, he is MD in micro, uh, microbiology, he is now associate professor attached to uh, Chittaranjan National Cancer Institute, Kolkata. Uh, with this short introduction, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, invite Dr. Subhrang Shumondal to please start your deliberation. Very good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to always come to Somascan. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by their, by their, by their uh, warm hospitality. And uh, again, I must say, it's very, they give me a very difficult task because I stand between you and your dinner. So it's like uh, playing last five hours of a T20 game. Let, let me uh, as brief as possible. So, uh, just Dr. Mon, uh, Jackson, uh, Mon, uh, yes. yeah. Actually, uh, I want some time for interaction. Interaction. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it will be very good. It's a very important status. Sure, sure. Uh, actually, we uh, we uh, like to uh, our uh, August sure. gathering to interact. Okay. Sure. Uh, yes. uh, my topic, uh, my talk will be about the uh, interactive one. So uh, antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. We talk a lot about antibiotics. 
so uh, can you have a wild guess where the antibiotics are used for most nowadays? Any wild guess? Cases from the IPD, OPD. Rural practitioners. Doctors are not always to blame. It's the animal husbandry. The veterinary practitioners use the antibiotic most. The one health data we have is the, the veterinary practitioners are the largest user of antibiotics. Doctors are not always to blame. So uh, now again, uh, in 1950, there is a paper in uh, nature, the win against microbes. So, human became immortal. You can be immortal, any, any kind of bacteria can be killed by the antibiotics we are preparing. See, in 2013, there is a Chennai declared by Dr. Abdul Ghaffur, who is a very renowned ID physician of uh, Chennai Abadov. He wrote an orbituary of antibiotics. See, within the 50 or 60 years, first the wind over micro, then the obituary of antibiotics. Because more and more drug resistant bugs are emerging and there is absolutely drying of pipeline. There is no drugs in the horizon. Believe me, there is no drug in the horizon. The, all the drugs are mostly US based and they are basically based on gram positive bacteria which is not a very big problem in our country. We are dealing with mostly gram-negative bugs. So, in abroad, insurance companies are refusing to pay the emergency infections. Forget about abroad. Believe me, I have faced two health commission cases for having acinetobacter pneumonia. Acinetobacter is a healthcare respiratory pneumonia and so you have to face it. So, it's a future. Now, see the crisis in the ID. It's widespread IMR and increasing number of patients who are immunosuppressed. I am working in a cancer hospital, I can see day in and day out how much patients are affected with cancer. And we all know India is becoming the diabetic capital of the world. So, we are getting much and much immunosuppressed. And emergence of new pathogens. What can you say when we are in the midst of a pandemic? Of by a virus of which we don't know anything two years prior. The re-emergence of older pathogen. As so I said, told that there is XGR TB, there is drug in malaria, what not. And this bias is due to antimicrobial therapy. We use antibiotics for viral infection and we get a this bias. So, the global estimate. This is by WHO. They told by 2050, almost 10 million deaths attributed to by AMR costing world economy about 100 trillion US dollars. So this is death. Now what is Indian data says? See, this is a network by ICMR comprises of some apex institute of our country like AIMS, Chikmar, PGI Chandigarh. So they collected the data where we can see it as Sanjeev has told you, E. coli is the most common organism in, in the outpatient setting. Whereas Klebsiella remains the main culprit in the indoor. See in the 2019 report, we see there is a steady increase in Klebsiella occurrence from 13 to almost 14% to 17.5%. And 50% is included among the milk in Klebsiella. And in contrary to the fact, there is 93.5% sensitivity of pollution. That means we can have, have almost 6.5% bacteria, which is PTR. Pollution is the last resort. We don't have anything other than those for treating in their chin So, what do you do? So for me, this, these are the four most key moments for antibiotic choice. 
First, you have a question, does my patient have infection? If my patient have infection, then what kind of infection he is? Whether it is a viral infection or it is a bacterial infection, it is a gram positive, it is a gram negative, we need to know that. Second, have I ordered the appropriate culture before starting antibiotics? Have I ordered blood culture, sputum culture, urine culture, whatever may be the source of the infection, whether, whether I have ordered the proper culture before starting the antibiotic or not? And what should be our empirical therapy? Since you have given excellent talk on empirics, I, I want to get into details. Third, ADM and mode have been passed and my results have been available. So, what next? What should I do? Can I stop the antibiotic because my cultures are negative? Can I narrow down the therapy or de-escalate the therapy? Or change it to IV to oral? And last part, what could be the duration of the therapy? As you all know, the new dictum is shorter is smarter. They are not advocating for prolonged antibiotic therapy. Now this is of, of utmost importance. Obtain culture prior to starting antibiotic. You need to develop a process in whatever setting you are practicing and for that, is not only the duty of the doctors, you need to empower the nurses of your institution. The nurses has the cap capacity to ensure safe and timely collection of the samples prior to starting up activity. You, you may write down the direction, but nurses or the resident doctors have to do it. This is the main key thing you have to ensure. So there is a wonderful guideline by IDFA Infection Review Society of America. So, how do you utilize your microbiology laboratory to the optimum level? So, these are some clinical paths I am going to, not going to the details. So, for whom they are recommended against sending any kind of superficial swabs. So, they are most likely to recommend the colonization. So, the preferred sample will be pus which may be aspirated or tissue. For surgical wound, they always recommend to consult with the microbiology for proper correction of sample because sometimes it, it may uh, need a proper cleansing or debridement or so. Blood culture, he has told it absolutely correct. Two separate sides, the volume, he has made it absolutely correct. Generally, we should avoid Collecting blood from the lines, except when you thought that lines is a source of infection. That means you are thinking of a central nervous system infection or something like that. Urine, again, we give a wonderful thing that ensure the patient's symptom. It's not about isolating a bug, it's about the symptom of the patient and you need to know asymptomatic bacteria need to be treated only in two conditions. One is pregnancy, one is before any kind of procedure. Nothing other than that. And the thing is that you need to make sure that urine routine has to be performed simultaneously with culture. Because if you don't know the parcels, there's no point uh, seeing the culture. So again, uh, we all are dealing with antibiotic acidity idea and clostridium difficile is the most common acid. So again, you need to know that you that test need to be performed only and only on liquid or semi-solid stool, not on solid stool. Now the thing is that if the patient is on laxative, many many times we give laxative to our patients. So you need to stop the testing for at least 48 hours to go off the laxative vaccine. Then you can test it. The most important thing is that the testing for cure for Clostridium difficile, especially if you are doing a PCR test, is not at all recommended because it may be present, right? it may be positive for many longer time after even the infection has been cured. So testing for cure for CD patient, if 
you are doing a PCR is not recommended, not at all recommended. So the highlights are microbiology should reject poor quality sample. You should have the guts to reject the poor quality sample. Tell the uh, clinician that this sample is not adequate, send me a repeat. Second one, physician should not demand the laboratory to report everything that goes. Should not. Specimen from sites like sputum, nasal sinuses, superficial wound, fistula, and other sites require special care in collection. A laboratory requires a specimen, not a swab. Eventually, a superficial swab will come up and be not seen online. Though. Specimens should be collected prior to administration of anti antibiotic and susceptibility testing should be done only on clinical significant isolate, not on colonizer, not on contaminant. And specimens should be labeled correctly. So, the race is against a turn turn around time. We all are very, very busy and we all need our results very quickly. There comes the need of turn around time. There is a hell lot of test, rapid diagnostic test. Uh, biomarkers have been approved by IDSA and several other, other com uh, companies, but generally they vary in technology complexity, price, sensitivity, uh, identifying singular multiple pathogen. But they generally targeted the drug resistant bug like MRSA, VRE, ESBL, CRE, so on and so forth. So the terminology has changed. Now, previously it was told that turnaround time, now it is TTI. Time to intervention. What is, what is the meaning of reporting a culture report rapidly if you don't intervene? At all? You need to intervene in the culture report. You need to intervene with your antibiotics. You need to stop, de escalate, or escalate whenever the result is available. So the intervention is necessary, not merely the availability of results. So I get an ST, why it's important, as you all know, you need to know the identification, you need to, need to know the, what antibiotic is most likely to act to cure an infection and reduce the imperative prescription of broad spectrum antibiotic, avoiding the unnecessary prescription of antibiotic that uses healthcare calls also. So clinicians use antibiotic sensitivity testing result to help determine the most appropriate treatment for infection and the individual patients. So the 1960 rule, what is 1960 So even if the in vitro susceptibility testing shows that the organism is susceptible to such and such antibiotics, 90% cases it may have a desired result, but 10% cases it may not have desired result. Conversely, if you have a resistant bug in your in, in vitro susceptibility testing, you may have a clinical response despite of having a resistant in vitro result. Sometimes you may get a result, say seeing your pip tear is resistant and you start a pip tear and your patient is getting better. And you tell, oh my god, your patient is getting better. So it's ruled that 60% cases you may get a clinical response even if your in vitro susceptibility testing so resistant. So why is this necessary? Is for selection of appropriate antibiotic, monitor the resistance development, detect a new type of resistance development, compare the trend among the different geographic areas, and develop and evaluate intervention and prevention strategy. That's why we are talking about in OPD and IPD and so on and so forth. There are two types of antibiotic support testing. One is phenotypic, what we generally do, and another one is genotyping where we can see what kind of genes the sample is harboring. But the problem is that this result is very, the this result is very, very much rapid. You can get an uh, idea of what kind of antibiotic gene is the bacteria is harboring within 15 minutes to one hour. But the problem is that near the presence of gene doesn't mean the bacteria is going to express that gene. For the expression to happen, you need to do the phenotypic test. So this may, these two tests may go hand in hand. You can do a genotypic testing, rapid molecular testing, but you should do a phenotypic testing.
to see whether the bacteria is actually expressing that gene or not. So these are the different methods of uh, AST testing and I am not going to that details. So automated microbiology instruments which generally all big labs including Sonoscan is doing is this kind of test which is called VITEC and which is an advanced method of AST completely automated, have a large panel of antibiotics and this method provides direct substitute pattern and guidance about the possible antibiotic treatment. So, the interpretation varies from susceptible, intermediate and resistant where susceptible means the bacteria is usually going to, going to uh, the patient organism is usually going to respond with the recommended dose Resistant means it may not respond with the recommended dose and intermediate is clinical response is likely to be less than the susceptible strain. But we need a clinical categorization. For that, we don't need MICs, we need breakpoints. What is that breakpoint? Breakpoints because if you are a clinician, you may not remember all these values. These are huge number of values. You cannot remember all these things, but we need to remember some discriminatory uh, concentration of concentration of antibiotic by which the uh, antibiotic can be defined into resistant, intermediate, and susceptible. These are called clinical categories by which we can say this organism may be susceptible or intermediate or resistant. Let me make it very, make it very clear. MIC is a minimum inhibitory concentration of antibiotic to inhibit the visible growth of any bacteria. Now, breakpoint is a discriminatory concentration used for the interpretation of results to define as susceptible, resistant, and intermediate. That means MIC can only cannot be defined a bacteria as susceptible, intermediate, and resistant. You need to have a breakpoint for that. And who defines that big point? There is no Indian agency for that. There are generally three agencies, three or four agencies for that. Two is American, two is European, FDA, CDS, and UCAS, and EMA. So, generally, there is a pharmacological concept behind the big points where you need to know the serum achievable concentration of antibiotic, particular resistance mechanism, successful therapeutic outcome. In practice situation, the entire range may not be used for decision making. So as I told you, there are different different foreign organisms like uh, for, foreign uh, controllers who, who determine the breakpoints. So these are the main big two players, CLSI and UCAST. One is based on uh, US, one is based on UK. Generally, we follow CLSI. But remember that Industry, that means the pharmaceutical industry has a large role to play in CLSI. Whether in UCAST, there is, uh, they are not part of the decision making process. I will not go into that detail. So, uh, they are actually, uh, they have a breakpoint and there is a different category called STG. In UCAST, they don't have an intermediate category. They have a ASTD category, susceptible dose dependent category. So, for determining breakpoint, we need a multidisciplinary approach. One is a microbiology, for which we need to have a epidemiological cutoff criteria, pharmacological PKPD index, and clinical outcome. So, susceptible dose dependent and intermediate. What is susceptible dose dependent and what is intermediate? So, as I told you, the therapeutic response is less likely to be there whenever you are dealing with an intermediate kind of category. Now, <clears throat> there is a grey zone. It may or may not act. But in case of susceptible dose dependent, that means there is a guarantee that if you increase the dose or if you increase the duration of the antibiotic, there is a, there should be a clinical response. So there is no grey zone. <laughs> susceptible dose dependent means it should be susceptible if the dose is adjusted properly. So see, this, this 
mainly happens with this CFA prime. In 2013 CLSI, they have a 16 MIC having intermediate rating. In 2014, they have changed it. 4 to 8 for CFA prime, it is susceptible to dose debate. Now, how will you change it to your therapeutic criteria? Now, if you get a 4 MIC, you should use 1 gram sepifying every 8 hours or 2 gram every 12 hours. You will get a clinical response like a susceptible. If you get a 8 microgram per ml MIC, you should use 2 gram every 8 hours. Simple. You use that MIC and adjust your dose. So, as I told you, why is it has been used now? Is is intermediate too often has been resistant to clinician because they don't appreciate the full definition of intermediate. Is it is already established antifungal susceptibility, and is it is more specific as it, as it conveys what's new and higher dose can be considered for isolates with MIC that's falling into that interpreted criteria. Again, there is a there is. 2021 guideline which shows again 4 to 8 CPA pine in uh, the LCD criteria and you may be glad to know or you may be surprised to know the very often used antibody that is hypersin telovectum uh, previously up to 16 it was sensitive now the 16 MIC is becoming LCD now what should be your dosage Generally, we use bipersin uh, desvectum in 4.5 QTS. That is a normal dosage. But the duration will be 30 minutes or something like that. They are telling you should infuse 4.5 QTS in 4 hours. So, you are increasing the time. So, again, it is a time dependent antibiotic and time T rather than MIC is to be there. ECOF is more of a microbiological data, I will not go into details. ECOF or epidemiological cutoff value is mostly microbiological strains to divide two kinds of strain between having a wild type and a non wild type. Wild type means it has got no resistance mechanism. Non wild type means it has got some amount of acquired or mutual resistance mechanism. That's it. But <coughs> problems of E C V, but that means ECOF being used as breakpoint. Just because it is wild type, that doesn't mean it may not have that P D criteria to be met. So, again, conversely, you are having a non wild type, that means may not have the P D criteria is met. So, the most important thing is thing for this ECOF is polystin. In two thousand, up to 2018, there is no guideline for intravectricity to report cholesterol. There is no, absolutely no guideline. We are reporting uh, just as is in uh, case of pseudomonas. 2018, there comes a criteria of ECOF. From 2019, they have removed the susceptibility criteria of cholesterol. There is no criteria of susceptibility of cholesterol. There is absolutely no criteria. They have categorized is intermediate and resistance. Nothing more than that. There is no susceptible criteria. They are going beyond polemics since right now. So certainly you should not report which is not having a breakpoint, which is having only a cough. So uh, again interpreting a CS report it identifies the bacteria, doesn't identify the infection versus colonization. Susceptibility testing is, is subject to variability depending on the pathogen tested, media used, <coughs> condition of incubation and method of assessing the bacterial growth. So let us see. This is a distribution method, staph aureus, having this kind of sensitivity. What is your choice of antibody? <coughs> What will be a choice of antibiotics? Cephalixin. Cephalixin. Any other choices? <coughs> but 
your first choice will be cephalexin. So <coughs> this is description method. Step for yes. See what he has told. MRSA, oxacillin. Oxacillin is a marker of marker of all beta lactam antibiotics, including BL, BLI, and carbapenem. So we need oxygen resistance. The report is wrong. Cephalexin cannot be sensitive. This report is absolutely wrong. The choice should be linezolid over here. And second thing is that vancomycin cannot be reported by distribution method. Cannot be because vancomycin should be reported with MIC. Without MIC, vancomycin cannot be reported. So generally we get this kind of report where you can see oxacillin resistant oxacillin resistant oxacillin resistant cephalexin sensitive oxacillin resistant oxacillin resistant this is a wrong report this is an example of a wrong report I am coming right around to you this is an example of a wrong report I am coming right around much more example of that so this is again a kind of antibiogram which we get, which we generally get from Vitek. See, this is again a. This is again. You can see oxygen is sensitive, and cefoxylin screen is negative, and all the other drug drug are sensitive. So that means this is a MSSA, not not a MRSA. Oxygen is sensitive over here. So here there is no need for testing for all those drugs. Corvisclax, Cetraxone, uh, your Meropenem, so on and so forth. Because this is what CLSA has to say. Vigilectum, if your oxygen result is sensitive, it is applied to Cloxacillin, Dicloxacillin, Metricillin, Napsilin, all BLBLA combination, oral CFMs, your all third and fourth year Cephalosporin and Carpenics. Everything will be sensitive. Now again, CRSS states that distribution method cannot be done for vancomycin. MIC can only be done. So MIC is is the lowest concentration of antibiotic that is that inhibits the visible growth of microbial isolates. But MIC has very little clinical relevance until interpreted in the context of drug microorganism and host properties. So goal to predict in vivo response based on the in vitro uh, testing. So it is most accurate and specific, mandatory for certain organisms. For as I told you, in, in case of staph, vancomycin is mandatory. Helps in phenotypic based resistance mechanism detection, better advice management of clinical patients, optimization of antibody treatment and calculation of dose. So again, there is a report where you see a zero month heterogeneous and this kind of report where there is sensitivity of Comexiclab, sensitivity of uh, say TGCycline, <coughs> Colistin, uh, Otrimoxol. Say for example, it's a, it's a uh, pus sample uh, or a sputum sample. What should be your choice of antibody? Should I have it? Amicus. I'm going to eat. Organism zero mass. Homomexic lab sensitive, TG cycling sensitive, colistin, uh, uh, co-trimoxylum. Should I have it? Why not Covisilab? 
Pilot, did you say anything? I reported the bullet. I didn't even hunt the report of the bullet. Report is wrong. Report is absolutely wrong. See, in case of pseudomonas, if you isolate pseudomonas, there is no point you get a coaxial sensitive, you get a co time of sensitive, you get a recycling uh, sensitive. So, my point is that you cannot blindly report on your machine also. You have to use it, utilize your brain. It cannot be either, so this is called interpretative reporting. So when this allows, when there is an anomalous combination of phenotype and the organism, that should be reconsidered before reporting. So that is a uh, fall from a microbiologist part to release that kind of report. It should not be reported. That means your organism and your phenotypic isolation of the antibiotic activity is not matching. It is not matching. The prediction of further antibiotics can deserve testing. Suppression of susceptibility that are anomalous in the light of inferred mechanisms. So this is called interpretive reporting. You need to know what kind of bug is intrinsically resistant to what kind of antibody. So you cannot blindly trust reports. This is the age old thing. We all know about all these things. PK, PT, T get T greater than MIC. Peak by MIC, UC by MIC, so he, he has already told it that uh, whenever you have a concentration dependent antibiotic, amikacin, uh, gentamicin, fluoroconulones, we need to maximize the concentration. The idea is to maximize the concentration, to give as much drug in single go. And for type 2, that is time dependent antibiotic, most of us use vital active antibiotics, that is more frequent dosage, maximum duration of exposure, where you need to increase the time above the MIC. So you get either larger dose, increase infusion or frequent infusion. These are the way you can have T above the MIC. The drugs are being carbapenem, cetrosporin, time three, type 3 is a mixture of both. Again, better azithromycin, clindamycin among those drugs. So, Another one is uh, therapeutic index. This is very, very important to know. Uh, where your breakpoint, that is lower MIC, breakpoint versus lower MIC. Lower breakpoint versus MIC is as high your therapeutic index is, as much the chance of getting a clinical cure is there. And getting a uh, much more important uh, case scenario. So this is, I, I fear this kind of bug most, the sensitive bug, most dangerous thing. So again a COPD case patient, uh, pseudomonas, polymorphs is there, gram negative bacilli, sensitive to all, standard use point, without any clinical response. Why? Now here comes the role of this breakpoint. See, among the all the drugs, you can have the highest therapeutic index in case of So if you if you divide 0.5 by 0.12, can you have a highest therapeutic index? There are two different types of breakpoint definitely in case of that is that was from Ibgas, that is from CSI. Again, both the cases we have a higher therapeutic index and ciprotoxin has got a better penetration in lung tissue. Although, right now, we are not recommending any quinolones to be used for any kind of infection because of reserve drug for uh, TB, XCR and all these things. So, I mean, four simple rules. Four simple rules for starting any kind of antibiotic. Start with bitter lactam if possible. If you are not suspecting any, any articular infection, start with bitter lactam. Do not compare MIC to interrupts. Please do not compare it. They are have, having separate set of MIC, separate set of breakpoint. Do not compare them. If you if you don't understand or if you don't remember anything, just remember if it is less than equal to, you can use the drug. Simple. So, exception, drug doesn't get into the site of the action. That means if you are using TG cycling in case of urine, uh, doesn't achieve the 
PG parameter doesn't have the inducible resistance, space specific factor, or there is huge drug cost. Rule 4, microbiology has got always more information. So you have to have a good liaison with a microbiologist, believe me. So, uh, blood culture again, endocrine sickles, everything sensitive. Choice. Do not compare MIC between drugs. Is it okay to can use it? My is always uh, C. Now, drug of choice is ampicillin sensitive, enterococcus is ampicillin. So, uh, now do not compare. Daptomycin has got a lower MIC than ampicillin. But, ampicillin has got a better tissue penetration or better blood penetration in case of enterococcal bacteria. Now, if you, if you, um, cost, if you choose a cost effectiveness also, Ampicillin is a better choice and microbiology has got a more information although microbiology is also tested in injury so you can have a oral option if you want to taper it off although ampicillin has got a uh, oral option also so ampicillin is a choice so this is a very common scenario 32 year old married lady visited OPT with dysuria, pain at lower abdomen 2 days no similar history urinary plenty of pus this is a gold mine so, this is a bacteria, equalizing. So, we have kitchen action. 5 percent alveolectum sensitive, cerebral uh, alveolectum sensitive, your carbapenems are sensitive, uh, amitacin is sensitive, TJ cycling, phosphomycin, pollution is intermediate. Choice. Phosphomycin. You can. Brilliant. Phosphomycin. So let's see what IDS has to say. Uh, first choice will be nitroferentran. Nitroferentran is not tested. So uh, second will be your cotrimoxal. Cotrimoxal is resistant. Third is uh, phosphomycin. And pivamycillin is not uh, there in India. So again, start with beta lactam. Again, a possible one. The corona bicina, majority of drug. Less than equal to because majority of drugs are IV. Majority of drugs are IV. TJ Sanguine has got a very poor penetration. Phosphomycin is the drug of choice. So they have also tested nitroferentrin. Nitroferentrin is also sensitive. So if, if nitroferentrin result is not available, ask for the result. Or ask for ask nitroferentrin whether it is nitroferentrin or phosphomycin. So these are the common types of ESBL. I will not go into details. He has already told it. So there are three very simple ways to know whether it is a ESPL or MC. He has already given a very elaborate talk on it. First, you th three, three things. One is safe oxygen susceptibility. One is BLBLA susceptibility, and one is hepatic pine susceptibility. Three. Now, if it is a safe oxygen sensitive, BLBLA sensitive but resistant to cerebral. It is ESB. Simple. Now, if it is cefoxidin resistant, BLBLA resistant, cefoxidin sensitive, it is MC. But the problem is that, it's like the mathematics of Casina, you cannot get it as simple as that. Because we have a co progression Almost 40% of cases, we have GSBL plus MC. There is no rule in medical sciences. This is a wonderful example of uh, this kind of thing where you see there is cefepime SDT and there is a borderline increase in the MIC of the carbapenem. Artapenem is 4, imipenem is 4, metopenem is 2 intermediate, amicacin is, amicacin gentamicin are sensitive, polystin is intermediate and phosphomycin sensitive. So in this case, this is not a carbapenem is. This is a case of high level MC production. Whenever you see a carbapenem is borderline higher value and you get a susceptible dose dependent or susceptible uh, cefepime, you should think there may be chance of 
having a high level MC. So you can have a high dose of meropenem or phosphomycin IV in these cases. So again, uh, do not use antimicrobial if these are not necessary. Always take into account the intrinsic resistances. Check any unusual levels. The patient history is of utmost important. Drug choice needs to make in the account the drug properties and distribution of the predicting efficacy. Dosage adjustment should be precise to avoid sublethal combination or toxicity issues. Whenever possible, use narrow spectral drugs. Let's see what kind of MDR drugs look like. So, say Mr. XYZ presented to uh, nursing home with fever, cheese, and persistent coughing. He was given a homeopathic lab with azithromycin, standard treatment uh, in OPD. Patient started complaining of uh, blood, mucus, fever, chest pain. Refer to a multi specialty hospital, say for example, Malda to Kolkata. Now it has been intubated in the hospital. Uh, aspiration, uh, ET aspiration was done due to epsia, gram negative bacteria. And this is the sensitivity pattern. Everything, almost everything is as I have told it, is XDR, excepting TG, phosphomycin, cholestin. Amicacin intermediate. Are you okay with this or you will go for any other testing? Ask for any other testing. Okay. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you All are resistant. Okay. The sensitive is TG cycling, phosphomycin, polystyrene. And amethyst intermediate. Do you happy with it or will ask for anything else? Blood culture. Blood culture, this is there. Blood culture will be there, but this we, we have. We have this. We grew this, we reported this. Do you happy with it or ask for any other antibiotic to, to have a choice between them? There is a different card. It is this uh, visible? No. No. So, uh, this is another kind of card available right now. It's called critical care card. So, where we have uh, ampicillin sulvectum alongside the previous card, septicillin mevectum. Any of us use septicillin mevectum? No. Septicillin uh, tablovectum, nitylmycin, tobramycin. Doxycycline, tetracycline, prolongphenical, volibi. So, if if you see the entire trials, if you have a sensitivity of septicemia vectum, if you see the latest guideline of IDSA, even there is a wonderful guideline by ICMR how to treat drug-resistant bug. If you don't have it, please uh, let me share with you all. There is a wonderful guideline by ICMR which is at par with IDSA and uh, the other other guidelines. Uh, it has told that if you are suspecting a HAP, hospital acquired pneumonia or complicated CAP, complicated community acquired pneumonia, the starting agent could be septicemia vivectum to avoid or misuse of uh, your carbapenem and when there is a chance of clinical failure when you are using polymixins. Because polymixins, we generally report it as intermediate, we don't report it as sensitive. So, whenever there is a chance of getting septicemia uh, or infectum to be, uh, to, you have in your armamentary, then you can use septicemia vectum. So, in this case, we use septicemia vectum. This is a molecular test uh, we have done. This is a biofire testing where we can see from, the, we can do a test, although this is not available in periphery, I am just telling you by which we can actually choice the proper antibody, by, by which we can know the, what kind of genes has been there. So see, this is CTXM and OXA, this is and Imoni, and this is an ideal candidate for having septicemia and IVF. Although it's not there, but in routine microbiology, it can, can be done, can be done by seeing only in-sim and e-sim, modified carbapenem inhibition test, you can see 
you can generally see it and say whether the bug is actually hibernating in carbonemis or not. So there are different kind of organism. Now, if you, if you have a NDM with it, we cannot use cetazine erectum. If you have a staph aureus in it, you cannot have cetazine erectum. So if you see the activity of erectum, you can see there is a class B, that is your uh, metal orbital is cannot be inhibited by erectum. And this is the cetazine erectum sensitivity. And we are using it for uh, for uh, longer than three or four months, and we are having a very good results. If the bug is not harboring a NDM, this is a rapid molecular target therapy. This is a newer thing. We sometimes later we can do it when we can have a direct molecular testing directly from a blood culture positivity where we can say this kind of drug resistant bug or this kind of gene is there. So, um, acid vector. This is a very common thing. You can see there is cyclopentane cyclopentane sensitivity. It is ET aspirate. Uh, minocycline, T-cycline sensitive. Policy is intermediate. Choice. Any idea? Cyclopentane cyclopentane. Minocycline? Minocycline um, only. Minocycline could be HOS definitely. But my question is whether to use hemorrhagin cellulectum or not. Because we need to know that in any case of acinetobacter, the activity of acinetobacter against hemorrhagin cellulectum is due to cellulectum, not due to hemorrhagin. So if you have to use it, use salvactam only, not sevodian salvactam. So lower MIC has already have discussed it. So again, this is a uh, MDR bug, all is, all is resistant. Urine and blood has got this, and this kind of pattern. You can have imibenum uh, 4 resistant, polystyrene sensitive. Choice. In these cases, we can have not only cholestin, you can have a combination therapy of increased dose of imibenum since the MIC is 4. There is a chance of getting a clinical response if you have an increased dose of imibenum alongside cholestin. So, um, MIC with resistant interpretation are becoming essential for treatment of customization, improve patient outcome, reduce antibiotics as side effect, limit resistance and protect existing antibiotic, help contain healthcare associated cost. 30 per selecting antibiotic based on MIC. Avoid any drug that are likely, not likely to get the source of the infection, that is moxifloxacin and T-cycling in urine, clindamycin and T-cycling in blood, daptomycin in lung, leofloxacin and piptazine in brain. Consider whether further testing is needed to reject inducible resistance or not. If there are multiple organisms, consider whether single agent can cover it. Consider TKPD data. Combine scientifically, select narrowest spectrum as agent if possible, de-escalate rationally and in the right time. So this is going on going on in WhatsApp, is a 20 year challenge or 30 year challenge or something like that. Is a microbiologist nightmare. Believe me, uh, they, they, the day after I got this, everything is. So this is this is dreadful. This is dreadful. Think. Think any of us or any of our parents, any of our relatives get admitted and we are abusing antibiotic like anything. So it is right time to see, to know antibiotics are non-renewable resources. So we need to utilize them wisely, utilize automation. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, Dr. Mondor for your uh, extensive, elaborate, and erudite presentation. Uh, now uh, we'll uh, go for uh, question answer session. Uh, before question answer session, I will uh, uh, request both the speaker to come to the dais, uh, and I also request uh, Professor uh, Dr. Pulanjay Shaha, who is well known to all of us.
he is MSVP and uh, he is a uh, very uh, learned uh, microbiologist. Please come to the dais so that uh, our questions answer session can be easily taken. Uh, may I request uh, someone to give uh, one uh, microphone? Now, any comments from uh, or question from audience?
there are a few other committees also. There is one is uh, Infectious Control and uh, Prevention Committee, IPC, I think, sir. And there are uh, Antibiotic and Patient Safety Committee also. And these committees should uh, work together. And to uh, avoid uh, antibiotic resistance further, we should prevent and uh, prevent the antibiotic also by sir, what is telling uh, with hand washing and proper other aseptic precautions. This is also a very important part of uh, is antibiotic stewardship and antibiotic uh, uh, to prevent future antibiotic resistance. Uh, yes, sir, in addition to that, we have also pharmacovigilance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, sir, drug, drug. Prescription audit is very important. That may be in OPD and in IPD. That we have also started, but not yet functioning. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, committee is there, actually, is not actually functioning. Pen and paper is committee, I will take away. I am not going to do it, prescription audit should be done. Before taking a further question, I want to raise certain uh, uh, regarding challenges uh, in facing this, all this uh, MDR and XDR. Uh, process, what I uh, feel, the, we have certain uh, challenges also, uh, like uh, as uh, Dr. Mondol was telling, that before uh, starting antibiotics, uh, we should uh, uh, always uh, 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 do uh, culture sensitivity or like that, uh, at least we should uh, uh, try to do, but uh, lack of facilities is there in rural, rural India, in rural setup, rural health center, uh, there is no chance of uh, 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 getting those uh, facilities to do culture sensitivity or any uh, gram staining also. That is one uh, challenge for us. And uh, there are uh, also, if there is any facility, uh, if there are economic factors also. We are in a very poor country, uh, living uh, maximum uh, persons are very poor they cannot afford and sometimes we face uh, those who can afford if you uh, uh, i can give one example uh, we often physician face a patient coming uh, with fever uh, suppose for five days and we are we can see uh, clinically diagnose that patient to be enteric fever enteric fever tongue uh, coating of tongue is there there is relative badicardia uh, there is some gastrointestinal disturbance our provisional diagnosis should be uh, maybe uh, enteric fever. In this uh, case, ideally we should uh, start antibiotic and before starting antibiotic, uh, we should uh, uh, take one blood culture. Uh, if I ask for blood culture to a patient in Malda, uh, that, that patient will prefer changing the doctor uh, uh, than to uh, resort to that investigation. This is our problem. Another problem is, uh, as you all are aware, uh, that drug schedules are there. Schedule A, Schedule X, Schedule H1. Schedule H drugs uh, are drugs, uh, you will, uh, if you see, there are almost 550 drugs are there. These are called prescription drugs. And if you uh, go to the list, uh, in, in uh, number 32, there is written antibiotics. So if you, uh, uh, if you antibiotic is to be sold, it should be strictly on the prescription. And schedule one is more stringent. Schedule one drug, they should be not only um, antibiotic uh, prescription should be there with registered med from registered medical practitioner. The record should be maintained. Uh, that prescription should be maintained. And these among these drugs, certain. Anti-tubocular drugs are all anti-tubocular anti drugs are there. They are habit-forming drugs are there. They are cephalosporin. Common cephalosporin we use cefixin. Cefixin, cefotaxin is also schedule H1 drug. And other other drugs like uh, gemifoxacin, levofoxacin, all the floxacins are there. And but uh, you all know it is OTC product that is over the counter product. Everyone is work, working, no um, restriction is there, no even quarks are using. And another you have mentioned antibiotic, uh, Dr. Mondol rightly mentioned antibiotics used in animal, uh, in uh, veterinary use. 
and uh, antibiotic use in animals and unrestricted use in the agriculture field also. This is another menace to human uh, civilization for further growing resistance and ultimately uh, I think MDR, XDR and ultimately PDR will be there, pan drug resistant. That will be a bad, bad day for humanity. Any other question? Sir, I just want to add, uh, yes. actually uh, there is a lot of role of government has to play. Because uh, we we cannot cannot just uh, uh, hold our hand and sit over there. Because who are registered medical practitioners? Government are giving uh, permission to the co-ops also to prescribe medicine like Neuropena. It's the responsibility of the government also to stop this OPC uh, drugs. So there are there are many facets. You are telling that uh, there is no facility in the rural Bengal for blood culture. I can tell you there are there are uh, states like uh, like Jharkhand. They are developing district laboratory which have a blood culture facility. If Jharkhand can do it, why can't we? Yes, that is a point. That we is are a also point. doing. Actually, no, we are also yes. doing. It is under process. So. Uh, state government so within uh, 25, 2025 uh, district laboratory has already been started. So it will be completed within 25. This is one thing. Another thing, sir, uh, you said uh, in periphery, typhoid fever, enteric fever. Most of the cases are uh, sensitive, actually. Yes. If you see, uh, my, from my experience, Shubhran should also appreciate the <coughs> patient migrating from other uh, cosmopolitan cities carrying this typhoid fever, those are multi resistant. But at community level, it has not spread yet. If it is not responding, those cases are maybe a labor come from UP or Delhi or Mumbai into the different block. They receive treatment there. And get if it is not improved, those cases actually refer to tertiary care center. And as uh, Dr. Shubranshu and Dr. Sanjeev rightly said, he, whatever antibiotic received, when the patient is in our hand, we should take blood for culture before giving the next dose of antibiotic. And also the amount of blood is very important in cases of bacteremia. It is a bacteremia case number of bacteria is much, much less. That's why this 10 plus 10, 20 into 3, 60 ml per day. And this is routinely practiced in South India, both aerobic and anaerobic culture. Don't be afraid, assure the patient, adult patient, ki tomate ke 20, 60 ml blood ami jodi ni, kichui hobe nato. When we are giving, uh, donating blood, one pinch we are uh, giving more than 30, 300 ml blood, we are donating. So, yeah, another thing is that uh, I have. Uh, doing almost 10 years of practice in microbiology, I have, I have seen only one case of citrapination salmonella in my life. In, in, uh, in Eastern India, there is only one case of citrapination salmonella time fee. What we have reported in the Journal of Molecular Biology in last year. So we have done the typing, the patient has got a history of travel to Bangladesh recently. So this is not a new one from our locality. So, till date, group A streptococcus is sensitive to penicillin. There is no resistance to streptococcus pyogenes to penicillin. And believe me, there is hardly any resistance to streptococcus in Sarkonate. <coughs> but that is injectable. Actually, uh, uh, it has been uh, also, study has, uh, has been found, uh, it has been found that uh, Quinonode resistance is quite high. Quinonode uh, is almost 100%. Yeah, yeah. Above almost, 70%. Almost 100%. Uh, yeah, above, above uh, 70%. So, so anyway, uh, any other question? Yes. Uh, Dr. Shubhran, I have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yes.
question. I have uh, yes, just yes. You know, my question. In case of de-escalation de of the antibiotic, when I am exposing higher group of antibiotics in a uh, group of people for two to three days, and then de-escalation. Oh. You are asking about course. Of course, yes. That's why I am asking. <laughs> that is that is why that is why I am telling. Uh, I know. Uh, as, as soon as you started that question, I, I know you will ask about the sir course. If I again start the antibiotic, you get resistant. No, there is, yes. there is no point. There is no such idea. If you get adequate amount of drug given for say two days, after that you get a, a lower generation antibiotic sensitivity. You can jolly well de-escalate. There is no chance of resistance. There is no chance of resistance. Actually, after getting sensitivity result, uh, we should de-escalate from broad spectrum to narrow spectrum. It is our idea should be always to give narrow spectrum antibiotic, keeping broad spectrum and uh, reserve antibiotic uh, for further use. For, See, for the idea, idea is to have a, when to have a, uh, if you still give, go, go on giving broad spectrum antibiotic, there is a chance of having a selection pressure. That means you are going to kill more and more sensitive drugs. So if you are if you are <coughs> giving a say for example if you are giving meropenem and the drug is sensitive to atropenem. Now you want to de-escalate from meropenem to atropenem. The source is being used. Got it? So you are having say you are giving one gram TID. Now you want to give the patient is being settled, the uh, human energy is stable, now sensitivity will come up and it's sensitive to atropenem. You can jolly well step down to atropenem because you are targeting that organism. Organism is not seeing that I am getting killed by meropenem. Organism is not seeing that. Organism is seeing that I am getting killed by the drug which is able to kill me. Two process Number one, if you continue this drug, bacteria are more clever than human. So they will try to survive. So there is a chance of mutation. So you are killing the sensitive bacteria as well as you are producing resistant, resistant bacteria that is, that is circulating in the hospital environment. And unfortunately, uh, this is uh, last night, our assistant super uh, grandmother um, aged around 65 or 70, suffering from melanoma, amputation was done and within three days died of Klebsiella resistant to meropenem and cholesterol last night. So this thing uh, happening in cosmopolitan cities, if you collect data, you can understand where, because uh, this is also going on in Malda, different hospital settings as well as private sectors. So, how to minimize the number of bacteria in the hospital settings besides antibiotic policy. So the concept now is that uh, if you want to uh, kill the bacteria, hit it hard at the first time. Sepsis, hit it hard, hit it with the highest antibiotic you think appropriate as per the typing of the patient. But once the report is in your hand, you should discuss it. Analyze the report and yes. Sir, that I will know be the yes. uh, It is uh, regarding uh, reporting part. Uh, recently I got a patient, uh, 9 month old male babe. Uh, in uh, routine microscopy, I could not find any parcel, but I uh, saw uh, motile bacteria. So I suspected maybe growth will come tomorrow. Uh, I kept, uh, I hold uh, that REMB report, and uh, today I saw uh, that is uh, full of E. coli in uh, McConkey plate. So maybe tomorrow Vitek is going to give it a um, E. coli report. So, what should I report it? Uh, uh, what was the urine sample? Urine sample. Yes. So, should I leave it as a asymptomatic bacteria or uh, should I report as a. What is the person? 
uh, it could not find any parcel. It could not find. Yes. So if it is not find any parcel, so now you tell me where uh, is the fault lies. Uh, actually, when the sample was given, when you, you, what is the receiving time, at what temperature the urine was there. Actually, that uh, patient is known to me. Uh, I got the information that uh, parents are telling that hazy urine. Uh, two or three times they uh, saw that the baby is nine month old. Nine. Is he wearing diaper? Yes. <coughs> but uh, I asked them uh, only at the time of uh, going outside uh, he is using. But at home he is not using. What are the symptoms? Symptoms I uh, uh, till now uh, they are not any symptoms. No, that I uh, that I kept in my head that I will ask them. Uh, but uh, if it is not known to me, no, no. that you, patient is known. You focus on past sin, number one. Number two, accordingly the growth will appear. You have to correlate with past sin. Luckily, that patient is known and to me, so I could get the uh, history. So, the known patient, patient is also asymptomatic. Even the urine collection is very, very difficult. So, you have to give the urine. He is male baby, so I... Male baby is the same way. He has a lot of experience. 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 ओके बोला है चल इवेंट आ दिए दो काम उठा थे तब बेशक ही चुवाले ये बात दो घंटा धोरे चेस्टा कोरे तीन घंटा जल खावा चे दूध खावा चे कोरे कोरे वो ही पोटे ही किंतु वो कलेक्ट कोरे रहे टेबले फेले थे बोलो तो दो घंटा चुले गया चे तो नॉर्मली तो सरफेस कंटेमिनेंट होगा ना इकोलाई एक अनेक उप टाइम मेंटेन करा है ये व्यापक तक आई कैन एश्योर ताई तो एक्चुअली आमी पेरेंट्स ने कैसे सुने चिलम जी बच्चा टा लोगों हेजी यूरिन पासपोर्ट चे हेजी यूरिन पासपोर्ट तक देखा है चलो ये चलने से टेस्ट करो चलो पासपोर्ट जो नो लोग हेजी यूरिन उंड Doubtful job. So, so you have you? to correlate clinically, clinically with the yes. count, colony count, because and along with parcels, abdicin yes. cast and other things. What I do in such cases, I report with a note that the parcels were low. Uh, you have to because I don't have a clinical, uh, clinical correlation for every case. So I keep I give the indication that there is a low level of parcels and still I have got a growth. So you correlate clinically if the patient is called, uh, clinically. Uh, clinical correlation is uh, very clinical important. Clinical correlation is very important. It's less to say, to it, but uh, in the report for the, our safeguard, this is we right. Yes, yes. Sir, in, in, uh, in uh, the last slide, you have shown that, that in, I don't think uh, that may encounter uh, some days, we may face this. All drugs are resistant. Then how we can prescribe uh, or treat the patient? If the patient is admitted in ICU, and resistant by PDR, PDR, and resistant. How how is it the PDR is uh, one of my favorite topic. So uh, now I have shown you one pen. So you have to go go for a extended pen because up to this we haven't tested the other antibiotics like. Cetazine, Evactam, Cetulazine, Evactam, Uram Penzal, Tetracycline, Doxycycline, Polymixin B, and your, say for example, Lampicin Salvactam. So, you have to explore more and more drugs. And believe me, there are two categories of patients we are now evaluating. One group is having Polymixins for various reasons. 
for having carbon radiation interactivity or um, uh, carbon radiation accelerator. And another group is only carbon radiation interactivity having astronaut and secondary reactor. There is a guideline by IDSA as well as the ICMR who told if you have a Indian producing carbon radiation interactivity, you can use the drug is actually astronom erectum. The drug is not available yet. So you can use astronom and cytosine erectum simultaneously to have this synergy. In that case, if we have got some kind of results. Another way is to use double carbapenem with a uh, uh, polymixin. That means the idea is to have a artapenem and meropenem simultaneously. Idea is to have artapenem to neutralize the effect of carbapenemis, to act meropenem underlies this, and to add polymixin. So there are various ways of uh, fermentation and combination we can use. So it is kind of trial and error method. So it's based on the patient profile, based on your uh, ICU setup, based on your facility, whatever you are having, we have to keep on trying. And also, and also on availability of all also those available. drugs. All those also drugs are not available. IDSA, IDSA, I think, in 2019. Is uh, in vitro culture sensitivity report always matches with in vivo or no? No, no, no. no, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. If you remember all those slides, most of the organisms are sensitive to cotrimoxone, which has not been used for a prolonged period. Yes. So in that case, uh, resurgence of sensitivity. Yeah, to all these physicians and other uh, doctors in different disciplines, if they are started using this, that can minimize the cost, that can save many lives. This is one thing. Another thing, uh, nobody has asked, maybe if the Dr. Kumar can explain One slide you have seen, the safe traction is resistant, and fourth generation Shetipime is uh, resistant, uh, and safe traction is sensitive. So this also happens. How it uh, will explain this? In the slide, you have shown uh, the subtraction is sensitive in antibiogram, whereas uh, acetipine is resistant. In one slide, you have shown acetipine resistant, subtraction sensitivity. What is the probable explanation? How do you explain that situation? Anyway, <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> if it happens, how? Is the report wrong? Or um, we, we are also getting this type of things. The fourth generation is resistant. So I doubt the. So fourth generation is resistant and septal is sensitive. Septal is sensitive. So you should uh, do a quality check for your yes. septal so, 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 and if if any reports reaches you with any doubt you have, you should bring up the microbiologist and ask yes. what is going on. That can be rectified yes. immediately for the benefit of the patient. What is the minimum time for, uh, for blood culture report? Minimum time, hmm. sir. Actually, uh, if if you get if you get a uh, blood load of bacteria or bacteremia, it can be give a positive signal within 12 hours. What? We can have a direct gram chaining and say whether it is a gram positive bacteria or gram. At least by 12 to uh, 18 hours, you can have a, at least you know your pathogen, whether, whether you are dealing with a gram negative sepsis or a gram positive sepsis. That, that much you can do. After that, uh, for the better center, which have a multi drug, we, we have a very lesser amount of time for identification. But for even in this setup, in, in Malda also, uh, you can get a uh, Entire result within 48 hours to 72 hours. So 
what in seventy two hours the professional report is being given. Exactly. What, yes. what, here, uh, we'll give what we do because we don't have multi top and other sophisticated yeah. instrument that is uh, available few institute in West Bengal. So what do we do? We have twenty four hours blood collection system. Central lab is open to twenty four into seven. And it is the instruction is given key whenever you receive after six hours you do one sub culture. That is the first thing. So Achki Akun Dili Chavanda Pode sub culture code the way Kalki Dhule both the Jati Krota say. Jita Ekano Pada Hai Sanjibo Bade age minister. Six hours left we do sub culture. Twenty four hours is second sub culture. Seventy two hours is third sub culture and final report we give after five hours. After seven. So seven days of the not all bacteria will grow. There are some slow growing bacteria. There are some other bacteria which do not grow in conventional media unless you specify if you are suspecting those bacteria. There are carditis, culture mm. negative carditis, no, a group of bacteria. When you are suspecting carditis, if you do not okay. mention us, uh, then there are other techniques that has to be formed. Some are capnophilic bacteria that should be cultured under higher concentration of carbon dioxide. So like that, suspicion is uh, like brucellosis. Brucellosis, uh, uh, if you do not tell me in your inclusion uh, form, if we are suspecting brucellosis, we will not keep that blood for six weeks. Because Brucella is a slow growing bacteria, it will take six weeks to grow. Actually, along with uh, sending sample, you should uh, uh, write a brief, brief history. Brief history. Brief history. Yeah. That is most uh, time we are missing. Actually, we, uh, we should missing. indicate what actually we are wanting to know. Actually, that is always uh, most of the time missing. Yes, that is the coordination between microbiologist and really? other. Uh, doctors of different disciplines. Sir, in our medical college, do you have anti biogram? Yes, we have some anti biogram policy. Yeah. Uh, we are um, practicing that. And but actually, but that is, I, I think that needs wide circulation also. Wide circulation. Yeah, that, yes. that is also lacking. See, this is a <laughs> very really really, small uh, uh, zone. Yes. Uh, we are getting the similar pattern of antibiotic sensitivity and resistive run. Yes. So, what Dr. Kumar is uh, reflecting six months data, that is also applicable to Malda Medical College, yes, yes. Dishari and yes, other yes. hospitals uh, in this area. Because yes, those, those data can be can, uh, actually uh, compiled and, and, yeah, yeah, and that can be a circulated data. Yeah, that can be circulated data. So that we can, uh, we can uh, use uh, those antibiogram in a proper way and proper select way, yeah. and, and select antibiotic accordingly. Yes. That will be easier to use antibiotic rationally. I think. Rationally, that a rational use is antibiotic and work, and a more important for not to use antibiotic. We are not to use. Uh, this, is, this is very this is, important. This is uh, this is this. Uh, like is like in diabetic diet. Yes yes. Uh, 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 where we will not use antibiotic. And actually, actually, it should be a multidisciplinary approach. It should, along with my physician, microbiologist, surgeon, even yes, even even sister sister representative should be nurses representative should be there. There, actually, I I was there to see a refer case in surgery. That patient of some infection, skin infection with burn case actually. Uh, I saw uh, that patient has very uh, deteriorated condition and one antibiotic he was getting for last 10 days. Uh, there is no review of antibiotics. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, actually, uh, nurses should also be involved. They should also uh, yes, pinpoint. We have ICM, in yes. infection control. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we are routinely supervising uh, all these things, uh, but, but uh, uh, things can be said. more better. Yes. yes. If we work together, yeah. we can definitely yes, minimize yes, that, that. the misuse and of antibiotics. That is a need of the time also, yes, sir. That is, is a need, need of, of the time. time. Yeah. Fully agree with you, sir.